Hi everyone, I'm Aria and in this tutorial I want to show you how I do displacements in Blender using geometry nodes. I'm sure you're somewhat familiar with this method but I just wanted to show you a fully procedural way to do this and just talk about why it's important to keep things as procedural as possible. As well, I just wanted to show you a trick that I've been using in some of my projects using the geometry proximity node. Open up a new scene in Blender then you can just select your default cube. Since we're doing geometry nodes, we just want to come down to the left here and click and drag to add a new window. Select this and head into the geometry node editor. Then click new. Next, we just want to select our group input and we can just hit delete since we're not going to be using the default cube. Instead, we're going to be using a grid. If I plug this in, you'll see that we just have a basic plane here. And since we're creating some type of ground plane today, we can just name this ground. Let's make this a little bit bigger and set those both to 3. We could add a subdivide mesh node if we wanted and add our subdivisions that way. But a better way of doing that is just to use the vertices in the grid in the first place. That way it's not hard to see how many subdivisions we actually have. And as well, if you wanted to change this to a different number, you could make a different shaped grid. We want to keep this as procedural as possible so that we can always go back if we need to later on. Now we want to add some displacement and you'll notice that if I add a transform node, we can't use these for any displacement or anything like that just because you'll see that this information can't be sent to this translation. So instead what we can do is use a node called set position and you'll notice right away that we have our diamond shape so we're able to send information out from our noise texture into our offset for example. You'll notice when I do add a noise texture we do get some displacement but it looks a bit weird. It's coming off of the ground and it's kind of gone up and to the right. If I was to mute this you'll see it sort of jump back and forth. When you normally use a displacement, there's something called a mid-level and that sort of just brings everything back to the center. And the simple way of doing that in geometry nodes is just by adding a math node. Then we want to select this and select subtract. You'll see if we leave it to 0.5, everything jumps back to the center. We're just going to duplicate this node and drop it next in line. Then let's click here and click multiply. Now you'll see if I drag this over, our noise gets a lot stronger. But you'll also notice that it's not really doing what we want and the more we add, the more skewed our results become. So the next thing that we want to do is have our noise affect the offset based on the normal. And the way to do that is to add a vector math node. Again, we want to set this to multiply and this doesn't really matter which one this is in since we're multiplying. But I'll just put it in the lower socket just because I'm going to add a node above here and we won't have our wires crossing. Again, we want to multiply our noise based on the normal. So we're going to hit shift A and type in normal. Then if I just drop that there and hook it up to our vector, you'll see now that if I multiply our noise, things are going straight up and down. Of course, things look a little bit jagged. So what you can do is add a subdivision surface and just drop that at the end. Then you can set this to one or two. I'm just going to set mine to two just to make it a little bit smoother. Next, normally we would right click and shade smooth, but there's a node for that. So again, keeping things procedural, we can type in set and you'll see a node here that says set shade smooth. And if we just drop it in at the end here, you'll see that now we've got a smooth surface. So again, this is nothing really new, but I wanted to have some displacement just right in the middle here. So a method that I've been using is using the geometry proximity node which gives us the ability to use an object to displace our mesh. Again, we're going to use a set position node so we can just shift D and duplicate this and drop this right after. If I just quickly hover back in the 3D viewport, we can hit shift A and we're going to add an icosphere. Then let's just scale this down a little bit and bring this up on the Z axis. What we're going to do is bring this 3D object into our node tree. And the way we do that is to select the mesh. Then we want to just click and drag our icosphere, which will create an object info node and it'll select our icosphere. You could also just type in object info and select it from here, but either way is going to work. And now what we need is to gather information from our object so we can use it for the offset. In this case, we want to add a geometry proximity node so you can type in procs. 
then you'll see green to green we're gonna have our target which is our icosphere and you'll notice that we have two different outputs here the first is our position and the second is a distance and what the position will do is if i connect this to the offset if i were to move this object you'll notice that nothing really changes which almost feels like it's not working but what we need to do is just go back into our geometry nodes and set our object info to relative what that will do is instead of taking the original position of our icosphere, it'll take the relative position. So now if we were to move it, you'll see that our mesh moves along with it. And in this case, that's not the option that we want to do. We want to use the distance output. And again, it's kind of going off and to the right as well as off the ground. So the first node that we want to add is our subtract node again, which will work as our mid level. But you'll notice that it's still going off to the right here. So we can duplicate our multiply node and drop that in. If I set this to 0.5, you'll see that it's a little bit better, but it's still kind of going off and to the right. So there's a couple more nodes that we want to add. We could do the same method we did last time, but we're just going to do something a little bit different here. So hit shift A and you can type in combine and then grab the combine XYZ node. If we just drop this in right after our multiply node, grab this and switch it to the Z, you'll see now that it's going up and down on the Z axis. You'll notice as I drag this up and down, it's more so wrapping around our sphere, so there's a couple more things that we want to do. First is just clip our values. So you could use a map range node, but in this case, I'm just going to use a color ramp. And now you'll see that it's sort of flat on the edges. If I was to click and drag this handle, you can see now that we can select our fall off. So I'm just going to bring this over a little bit, but you'll notice that one more thing is happening. Not only displacing downwards, but it's also displacing upwards. So if I was just to keep increasing this, you'll see that it kind of works. But of course, we want to be able to control the height of our ground. Just because if you had other assets in the scene, you don't want them to be offset from what we're doing. So what we want to do is go back to our subtract node, and instead of setting this one to 0.5, we can set it to 1. And now you'll see if I drag this up and down, our mesh is following the fall off. So if I was to bring this in, you'll see that the outside edge comes back up and we're only making a small hole. If you wanted to add another one of these, we could just hit shift D and duplicate our sphere. We just want to bring our other sphere into the node tree, add a join geometry, and we can connect this up. Again, we want to set this to relative so it takes the relative position. And now you see that we've got an additional control. As well, you can scale the size of these if you want a larger indent or a small. And just one more thing, you'll notice that it kind of flattens out our divots inside. So if you wanted to have a little bit more texture inside the divots, what you can do is head to the geometry proximity node. Instead of having it faces, you can select points. Then we can just bring these a little bit closer and you'll see now that there's a little bit more texture inside. Then you've got your fall off and you can just multiply this as much as you want based on the size of the divot. The best part of this is that we've done this completely procedural so you're able to go back and change everything that we've done so far. If you want to grab the file that you saw in the thumbnail, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. You'll get this file as well as a bunch of others. Or you can head to Gumroad and grab this file for free. I also have most of my other plan files from my tutorials on there as well, and you can purchase those individually if you'd like. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you want to support me, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support me a little bit more, head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. Okay, I hope to see you soon. Bye!